Hey there. I am going to do a, another version of the pour that I just did that was a smaller 11 by 14 canvas and it kind of came out pretty gold looking with with these colors in it and so I'm trying to pull out some other colors and I decided to take my green out of the equation and I took the uh, Soho red ochre and I deepened it with Artist Loft Deep Red and Soho's Red Matter, Rose Matter, I'm sorry. So I deepened that up and then I made this color which is Payne's Gray which is a turquoise color. It's not really a gray. It is like a really dark turquoise gray and I put Thalo Cyanin Green in it and a little bit of the bright aqua green so it's like a really deep rich emerald turquoise dark teal color so that's that color there and I have one more that I need to mix up I wanted to show you how I mix it this is a combination of bright aqua green by Liquitex Basics sky blue which is creative inspirations from Jerry Ar Jerry's Ardrama and you put the same amount of Oetrol Easy Flow as you have paint. So Oetrol is a European company. They only have a location in Miami. And so you can order it from Oetrol's website or from Amazon. And this is a new two and a half liter size, which is larger. So they do offer the larger sizes now, but they can be a little bit, uh, a little bit pricey. And it, but it's for people that are more so um, besides America, you know, the European area. And it's an alternative to Floetrol, which they are basically about the same thing. I'm, I really actually care for the Oetrol Easy Flow better. It's harder to get, but I think the quality is really fantastic. It's very self-leveling and smooth and it works really, really well. So now I'm going to add my water into my paint mixture. So you always mix your color up first with your Easy Flow Oetrol or Floetrol, depending on what you're using and what country. And so then you add your water at the end. So you want your paint and everything to bond first together and then you can add your water to get it to the right consistency. And two paints are always like super thick so it takes a lot more water than it does when you mix it with craft paint and bottles. So you have to kind of do it in phases and mix it as you go add the water as you go so you can kind of get the perfect consistency. You don't want to add too much at the beginning so it's better to add it in increments and mix it in really well before you keep adding more than you need. And That's still too thick. So I'm going to have a full cup here. This is about an 8 ounce cup I think. And what happens is after I use my paint I will usually transfer it into either a, a sealed up container that I have a lid for or I'll put it into a squeeze bottle that I already have a similar color in. That way I'm not wasting any of my paint. I always continue to use whatever I've mixed. I have several containers where it just sits for a while and then I'll open it up one day and use it. So that's a little on the thicker side. I'm going to add one more squirt but it's almost perfect but it is kind of thick. But when I did the last pour I wanted it in the earth tones and it was really really pretty and I wasn't a big fan of the green that had I had in it and I thought man that would be so pretty with some turquoise colors and aqua. So that's what prompted me to go ahead and mix up some more paint and make my red ochre a little bit more red which it's still a very warm brick red right now. So I've got these colors here that I've added to the ones I've already used. I've got OGX Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Serum. 
You can't use just any coconut milk. You can't use the coconut milk that people drink. This is a hair serum. It has dimethicone in it. It's on the ingredients in the back. I'm going to do one drop. And that's not a pump. I did not pump it. If you pump it, it's like way too much. You just need to barely squeeze it and let it drop in a little drop from the bottle. So I'm just going to do a few stirs. And that's it. Put my water away. And I added some white. So I've got white just a little bit. I've got the cream color, which was white and yellow. And a little bit of my brown, which is a raw umber. I've got some copper here. And I have a self-mixed kind of Georgia clay look. It's kind of an orange pumpkin color. And this was a little bit of just gold. It's not metallic. It's just a gold color. I was actually looking over here at this little container. I'm going to open it up. It's full. It's pretty much almost the same color. It's been sitting a while so it's got dried paint around the edges. But this is very similar to that. I'm going to actually just go ahead and mix it in so I can get rid of this bottle. I'll just take this cream color I have. And that doesn't even have to be totally mixed in because when you pour it out, it's going to the colors are going to mingle together anyway. And then this is a Martha Stewart Vintage Gold, which is a metallic that I've had for years. And then I added some um, Artist Loft Old Gold Metallic, so it's, it's still kind of a champagne gold color. So these are my colors, all here, one to one ratio with Oetrol Easy Flow. There's the bottle. Very, very comparable to Floetrol in the United States. So I'm going to zoom out totally here. And I've got a 20 by 24 canvas. And so according to my chart, well, it says 17 ounces, but I always have extra because I don't want to black in the, on the paint side of what I've got. And now that I'm looking at this, I may, I may stick a little green in here. And it's thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. And this is a color I mixed up myself, so it's not a particular brand or color name. It's just a kind of a forest green, not as deep as forest green. And I'll put a drop in there. So there's all my colors. And so I need 17 ounces, which is basically a couple of these cups. But maybe what I'll do is pour three cups, and I'll have extra. I can do six ounces or so in each cup, and I'll have enough to pretty much go around, I think. So I'm going to start with cream. I think I'll go ahead and put a little bit of this buttery gold color on the orange color. And I'm not trying to do a gradient pour, so I'm going to raise it up a little higher so it'll go down into the paint, because like one's sitting on top and the others have gone down. Um, let me do a little bit of white. Well, let me do brown. And instead of pouring that one area because the brown was thicker, I'm going to swirl it around. Now I'm going to do... Eh, I'll do the champagne -y gold color. It didn't show up very much in the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and put some in now. A good amount of turquoise. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and do the deeper blue beside it. Maybe just a little bit of the green. And I'm pouring from pretty high here. I'll do some uh, cream. I'll go back to... Mm, let's do the red again. And then I'm going to go back to the orangish color. Go ahead and kind of finish out this color. The golden color. I don't remember if I've used copper, so I'll do copper. Turquoise again. Maybe just a little of the blue. Brown. Do the champagne color. So I got full cups here, pretty much. Want to make sure that copper gets used in there. Little yellow gold. I don't even think I used the white. So I'm going to pour it from high. Use this deep blue color, Payne's gray and whatever color you want to call it, deep turquoise. I'm a 20 by 24 canvas. So I think I want to pour one straight through the middle and then on either side. But I want to kind of keep it linear like I did the last time. Pretty, pretty colors in the cup. Really pretty. And with OGX coconut milk, it's really nice if you can just let it kind of sit for a while. Because the longer it sits, the larger the cells kind of grow to be. But as you can see, without torching, I've already got some pretty great cells going on. And I'm going to do another small up while this is, you know, sitting and working. So I don't really have any orange left. There's a little bit. Do a little dribble of green, but I don't really want a bunch of green. So I've got this small cup. So always with OGX, you're going to get great cells, and it takes very, very little OGX coconut milk. Very little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this cream color kind of around the edge, maybe the champagne color. It's kind of an odd color. If it gets covered up, that's going to probably be a good thing because it's not not very bold looking. See some lumps coming out. So basically I'm just going to scoot this paint up to the edge of the other paint. And that way it will flow 
off the canvas better because I want to take these colors over the edge and that way I've got something that will meet up with it around all the edges. So this part is not even going to show up. So I've, I've got the reflection in the middle, I know, from all the different lights. So I'm ready to let the paint flow and it's going to make a big mess on the table, I know it. So I just got to get things out of the way so I can make my big mess. So the blue, interestingly enough, shows up kind of like navy blue which it's not navy blue. Let some of that flow off there. Just making sure all my corners are covered. Kind of interesting. I'm just trying to decide if I want to leave it. I got my turquoise to show up, which I love the turquoise with the oranges and reds. I've always loved that. The blue I thought would be a little bit more turquoise looking, so I'm just trying to decide. I'm trying to decide if I intermingle some turquoise in with it. I can kind of camouflage some of that blue, get rid of it. So, is this too brown here? Uh, just put a little happy, a happy orange red, kind of where this blue dot is. Let's see if we can do that. So, we gotta get that orange back in there. And then the red. I just, I love the orange, red, and turquoise, so. You just find ways to dabble it in. I have a tendency to play with my stuff here a little bit, but there we go. I don't want that blue, so I just keep playing till I get. Whoops, I dripped, dripped copper. That's okay. Maybe a smear of it over here. I think I'm pretty content with that. It's colorful, and I love color, and it's earthy. It kind of represents the dirt and a little a little tiny green. I didn't want a bunch of green this time. I wanted the aqua like water and the yellow. Just warmth and the contrast of red, orange, and blues. The warms and the cools. So there is top edge. Got a lump right there. I can see it. Try to maybe patch that in, but there's that corner. So there it is. Got some really cool things on the table here, drips. 
So if I can leave that and let it dry, I can have some great skins from that. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And also, go below the video and, sh and click on Show More. There's an Instagram link. If you would go over to Instagram and like me there, find me, Sandra Lett, on Instagram. And uh, it might be Sandra underscore Lett, but I'm there on Instagram. Go find me there and follow me. And uh, my Facebook group, which is below the video under Show More, Come join my Facebook group and we can get together on a more intimate level and you can show me your paintings and that kind of thing and we can converse with each other since there's not really a good way to do it on YouTube. And um, there's a PayPal link if you'd like to donate anything. I also would like to start a subscription if you, uh, if you go and you do a payment for membership, $4.99 a month, I will give you access to free downloads of my artwork and uh, maybe give some insider videos and tips and things like that, um, extra special things, give you a shout out on my next videos. Um, so if I can get some people that want to join and do the membership, I'll put your name there if you'd like to be mentioned. You just let me know. Um, I really appreciate anybody that can sponsor me. That would be awesome. It does cost a good bit of money to create art every day, and it's something I do and I love, and I'm actually going to start trying to teach classes and that kind of thing uh, close by in Fayetteville and maybe the Raleigh area. So if you're in the North Carolina area and you're interested in a class, email me at my website, sandralett.com and let me know that you're interested in a class and I, uh, I'm i going to be trying to do some classes in Fayetteville and maybe Raleigh and uh, I've got family members in Charlotte so I could even come to Charlotte and uh, different areas like that. I'll try to make a an excuse to get that way if you'd like to have a class and I'd like to get probably about 15 people in a class and um, do a couple of different techniques and, and you know, have a one-on-one -on -one with everybody in the class. So just think about that and I will uh, see you on the next video. Thank you so much. See you later.